And while border security is vitally important, so too is something that doesn't get nearly enough attention when discussing America's immigration debate. The numbers behind what's going on. Steve Camerata writes in National Review today, Pew Research has estimated that since 1965, when immigration was liberalized, immigration has added 72 million people to the U.S. population. The latest Census Bureau projections indicate that future immigration will add another 75 million by 2060. Americans, particularly Trump voters, may not understand all of the ins and outs of immigration law, but they do know that in many parts of America now, there are so many immigrants that the incentive to learn English or to adopt American culture is greatly reduced. They also sense that immigration is remaking the political balance by adding millions of new voters who are voting Democratic by about two to one. Wow. Well, here now, Victor Davis Hanson, senior fellow at the Hoover Institute. Victor, well, Pew tell us, tells us that I guess like 75% of immigrants are legal. So why aren't more people talking about the explosion of legal immigration in the country? Well, I think it's because they feel that it's an advantage to their particular agenda. We're the only, uh, Laura, multiracial, multi-ethnic country that's worked since Rome. And it's based on assimilation, integration, intermarriage. And that only can happen when immigration, legal, legal immigration is measured and it's diverse and it's meritocratic. So people are, are immediately immersed with people who speak English from different ethnic backgrounds and they assimilate. And the Democrats used to believe that. And as you know, they, they passed border security measures in the 2000s yeah. all the time. But I think what's happened is, don't you think they discovered that their agenda doesn't win 51% of the electorate anymore? <laughs> Bingo. But radical demographic changes, and here in California, one out of every four residents was not born in the United States. It tends to make a predictable voter profile, especially when people yeah. come in such numbers and they're not diverse south of the border system. and they vote yeah. in predictable. Yeah, it swamps the system and, and because we don't have it, yeah we don't have a public school system like the, it was 50 years ago, frankly, where people learned about the greatness of America, didn't debate about whether yes. the pledge was racist. So it's a very different uh, different situation with the way kids are educated today, which leads to lots of problems. But Victor, I want to stay on this political issue for a moment. Let's look at the map. I think yeah. we have a yeah. graphic of California's Orange County. Because this was this was Reagan yes. country. This was classic conservative America. Put the graphic up, please. Um, 2016, you see what the vote looked like. And by 2018, well, the GOP got wiped out. It is blue. You saw a few little blue, uh, you know, areas, districts, but now it's all blue. And that's happened across California, at least along the coast, uh, Victor, which... You know, again, it was all Reagan country. It was Pete Wilson, Reagan, uh, and fairly moderate Democrats. Uh, and now it's a super Democrat majority and people f still fleeing the state. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, when you have 10 million of California's 40 million residents that weren't born in the United States and they're told by the host, us, that we don't have conference in the melting pot, we prefer the salad bowl, then they self-identify by their ethnic Mm -hmm. you know, rubric rather than the content of their character. It's very strange because if we get down to the essence of all this, it was Barack Obama basically who redefined affirmative action, which really was designed for 12% of the population who'd suffered historic discrimination under slavery, Jim Crow, and segregation yeah. into diversity, which meant class didn't matter, prior record of exploitation didn't matter, uh, ongoing bias didn't matter. All you had to be was non-white, and that expanded that pool to a hundred million Americans. One third of the country all of a but, sudden yeah. said, "I'm part of a minority, and but, I'm going to vote accordingly." It yeah, was a brilliant Victor move also, on their part, but it, right. it really it was, it was smart. It was it was, but it was smart of the Democrats. It was cynical, but smart in the end demographically. You had a hundred thousand yes, voter absolutely. margin in Florida, Texas. Beto came close to beating Ted Cruz. If it weren't for Trump's visits. Ted Cruz probably would have lost in Texas. Sorry, I don't want to hear that. It's the truth. Okay, yeah, I, so you got Texas, yeah, you got they, Florida. Yeah. He, they pick off one of those states. Victor, what happens to the Republicans? Yeah, well, well, they're, they're in trouble because under the old paradigm, if your name was Giuliani or Pelosi or Cuomo or Pataki, eventually it didn't matter because you were going to assimilate, integrate, and intermarry, and being Italian was no couldn't predict what your political allegiance would be because immigration was not 
you know, Melting continually. Pot. Uh, and yeah, it yeah. wasn't. And the Democrats got smart and thought, you know, open borders is a way to flip uh, blue, red states blue, and they did it with California, New Mexico, Colorado. But Victor, they're Nevada, doing it with legal. And it's also within right. a state. We're doing it with legal immigration. Legal and people, illegal. Yeah, soon illegal. But yes. people have to understand this. We give 1.2 million green cards out every year. And every time this is up for a, a poll, every time, and Gallup polls this, people either want legal immigration reduced or they want it to stay the same. They do not want a glut of people coming in to keep uh, wages stagnant. They want rising wages in the country, which is what you the know. business community sadly doesn't want. Victor, thank you so much. We really appreciate it.